श्री गुरुवे नम श्री चैतन्य मनोवीस्ता कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमक्ति भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी पुछारी and we're late i can't stop i can't wait just put it on and you can leave um uh, lunch kitchen and uh, veg kitchen and sandwich yeah yes uh vidor's cooking i mean uh, parmananda okay Okay, I'm sorry for the interruption here, or a little bit disorganized on eyes on this end here. Okay, so um, we've been reading this one verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, which Srila Prabhupada uh, takes the opportunity to explore the present. anomalies within material society in terms of the day-to-day -day life and how people live and what is the ideal way to uh, live and how to overcome these other anomalies through this ideal lifestyle so for two days we've been talking about self sufficiency and uh, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the cows and so be in pursuit of that topic i'm going to read something um, that will be uh, hopefully helpful for everyone and this is um this is from a particular text called the gomati that's called it's a section of the vishva dharma which is called mati vidhi gomati vidya uh, and this is actually uh, spoken by uh, parasaramuni one of the great munis so here this is something uh, that I'll be reading it's a couple of chapters all great brahmana now i reveal to you the gomati vidya which abrutes all sinful reactions hearing this with full attention hear this with full attention the cow is another form of surabhi is the eternal sura surabari which is the eternal mother of the universe she is sacred beautiful and as fragrant as the fragrant herb called gula this existence this existence of the living entities our existence depends on the cows she wards all life's objectives she is the main cause of the production of all types of food grains fruit grains foods and fruit grains she is also the cause of the ingredients and the food offered and sacrificed to the demigods simply by her touch and sight she purifies all living entities she produces nectarine objects like milk yogurt and ghee and calves when grown up as bulls they carry heavy loads and produce full full grains by her milk products she helps demigods perform sacrifices 
All the great sages use cow products as ingredients for their various activities. Cow gives shelter to one who has no shelter. Among all purified objects, she is the most pure, purest, and among all auspicious objects, she is the most auspicious. I bow down before the cow who is the daughter of Brahma. She is pure internally and externally. She keeps the whole universe pure by her presence. I repeatedly offer my obeisances to her. The cow is a support by which one can directly transfer himself to higher realms. She is also the perpetual cause of one's wealth and prosperity. I offer my obeisances to the cow in whose body Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune resides. I offer my respects to the beautiful cow for she is pure, simple, and aromatic. If brahmanas are qualified to recite Vedic mantras, then cows will supply ingredients for their sacrifices. The cow is a support of the entire world as well as all the demigods. She is always worshipful. Actually, the cow and the brahman belong to the same family, both situated in the mode of goodness. Only by a combination of both the brahmanas and the cows is the performance of sacrifice for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu complete. The cow is the source of all nourishment and religious principles. Whenever the thirsty cow drinks water from the body of water, it is as good as Ganga, Jamuna, Sindhu, or Saraswati. In the body of the cows, or holy place, all holy places resides. Rivers are present. Lakshmi resides in cow dung. This is interesting. The cow dung, Lakshmi resides in cow dung. By offering respects to cows, one captures the four objectives of life, namely Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Therefore, all intelligent persons, types of people who desire benefit, offer obeisances to the cows. Okay, I'll be right back. I need to uh, secure my uh, eyeglasses. <clears throat> okay, secured. So here, that was again spoken by Parasar Muni one of the greatest of all sages. And it's called the Gomati Vidya. Um, in our Krishna conscious movement, we come across different things related to the cows, such as names of Krishna, such as Gopal, protector of the cows, uh, uh, Gokulananda, <laughs> Gokul is the place of the cows. And then there is uh, there is uh, Krishna's planet called Goloka, which is interesting, the highest spiritual planet in existence, has a name after the cow, Gokul. Gokulananda, I mean, uh, Go, uh, Goloka. Loka means planet and Go means Cow. Mm -hmm. So these uh, this glorification really is just, is just one of the many glorifications to try to help us understand the actual position of mother cow. Um, I guess many of us who were brought up in Western societies, uh, these things seem a little grandiose and a little bit beyond our ability to understand. Maybe because we are devotees, we accept it. We have no understanding. Those of us who maybe been born in the land of Bardvarsha, India, we have a little bit more of an understanding of the, the glory and benefit of the cows by our association with cows through the early parts of our life and maybe onward. But the, the, the cow is Krishna's pet animal. <laughs> you know, like in the Western societies, everywhere you look, somebody has a dog. And everybody loves their dog more than they love anything. <laughs> and then actually they worship their dog. <laughs> uh, 
I've seen where people undergo great austerities just to take care of their dog, uh, take the dog out for a walk. People who have uh, a lot of money, who have dogs, hire people to take their dogs for walks. It's interesting because the dog needs to go out and warm around and experience his dog-like nature. In fact, I had a, a friend who had a, his employment was that he would um, walk dogs for rich people. That was his occupation. Or at least that it was, it was employment anyway. So we see in the Western societies, uh, people have no understanding of cows and they're more attached to dogs like that. Uh, of course, dogs are also dear to Krishna, but the cow is very special in all sense of the term, both materially and spiritually. It says that in the body of the cow, all the demigods reside personally. Um, the cow, every part of the cow's body is auspicious. And when a cow dies, that body can be used in so many different ways to benefit others, uh, not for eating, but for the different parts of the cow's body can be used in different ways. While the cow is alive, she provides milk, which is the, which is the most nutritious of all foods. It, ha it contains all of the six uh, tastes within it, Milk concludes all the six tastes in one. So we also call milk liquid religiosity. <laughs> that was another term that we were, we adopted here in uh, our ISKCON society. Of course, that's also mentioned in the scripture is called liquid religiosity. Um, and milk, you can get butter. Everyone loves bread or butter and bread, right? Just take a piece of bread that's very nicely made, put some butter on it, and then you have a feast, right? Butter and bread. Uh, then you have ghee, which is the essence of milk down to its full essence, which is very fragrant, makes all foods taste celestial, brings it above the material energy. And um, ghee is also used for health in many Ayurvedic centers throughout India. They actually cure people by administering different quantities of ghee in proportion and uh, to a particular schedule and uh, people actually get cured by just by drinking ghee. Mm. So and then we have, of course, all the milk products that come from milk, the various milk sweets like that, um, which are unlimited. There's, I mean, you can make more than two to three hundred different kinds of milk sweets just just from milk and sugar alone. So, um, and then we have, of course, uh, yogurt. If you, have, if you take too much milk and you get a little uh, sick because of overdosing on milk, milk should be taken in regulated quantities and not too much. And one can simply take yogurt and administer yogurt with a little jira and uh, you, you have a cure <laughs> for the milk. So, um, and of course, there are so many other products coming from milk. So, and then of course, we have the uh, benefits that these products provide in our worship. When we use milk for worshiping the deity. We actually pour milk onto the deity. We pour yogurt onto the deity. We pour ghee onto the deity. We pour cow urine onto the deity. We pour cow dung onto the deity. So that is called panchagavya. The five substances coming from the cow that is used for the different types of abhishek ceremonies. 
And of course, you know, as mentioned here, those who are actually sadhus, uh, they all their ingredients for their worships are coming directly from the cow. So the cow is very auspicious. And when the cow is present, you know, when it walks on a certain type of ground, depending on the soil, it actually creates fertilization in that soil just by its hooves touching the, the soil. Um, there are many ceremonies throughout the Vedic uh, culture centered around glorifying and worshiping cows. There is Gopastami, Gostastami, and of course there's Govardhan Puja, which is the worship of of Giridhari, the hill, and the cows, like that. Krishna, when he performed that ceremony, he put the cows in the front, followed by the brahmanas and the rest of the inhabitants of Vrindavan, and they circumambulated, circumambulated Govardhan Hill after Krishna arranged for Govardhan to get fed with so many nice types of, many types of nice, of nice preparations. So the, the glories of the cow are unlimited, but we have a, a civilization that has no, no idea or no understanding or no desire to understand for the benefit of the cow. Uh, and therefore this civilization is on its way to hell. And one of the major factors that is destroying our civilization is the wholesale slaughter of cows. The karma that is occurred by, by uh, societies and governments that systematically arrange for the slaughter of cows is such heavy karma that it brings such inauspiciousness, such disease, such uh, hardships on the, on the population. Statistically proven, the five countries in the world are the most uh, profuse in setting up slaughterhouses. It's interesting, within those five, India is also one of the, India, the land of Dharma, the land of worshiping and honoring cows, is now one of the leading uh, countries for slaughterhouse business. The other countries are Argentina, Brazil, and the United States of America. And you see that when uh, these things reach a proportion of sinful activities, just like India suffered tremendously during this, during this COVID uh, uh, you know, pan pandemic, and I, we could actually point to say this is also due to systematic cow slaughter. So, of course, there are other reasons why countries suffer also, but the, un, the wanton killing of cows, and of course, just to mention it, uh, abortions are the two heaviest things that bring about uh, uh, what we say, collective karma within the society, within the community, within the, uh, within the world, actually. So um, I remember in my earlier days when I was just beginning my Krishna consciousness, I joined the New Vrindavan community I was never a person to go on to farms. In fact, I don't even remember before I got to Krishna consciousness that I ever lived on a farm or ever visited even the farm. I began my, that was in 1973, and you might say I was pretty much a city boy. But for me, it was an adventure, and I was thrown into a different environment, and I thought this would be a good way to practice spiritual life. So I remember we had a little cow barn just about a hundred yards from our uh, 
temple, small temple. And every day, right after the Bhagavatam class, and just before taking breakfast, all the devotees would leave the temple and we would walk those hundred yards and come to the cow barn. barn. And we would uh, take time and spend time with the cows. And the cowherd boys, the devotees who were taking cows would, 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 would be there and they would provide us with bananas, stalks of corn and various other items and we would feed the cows. So before feeding ourselves for breakfast, the first meal of the day, we would go out and take time and spend with the cows. And this was very nice, simple, reduced a kind of serenity and a kind of joyfulness in the life of the devotees. Uh, after that, of course, we, we got a bigger goshala and we had to move the, the goshala to a distant place. So we had lost that uh, that wonderful experience of going seeing the cows right, right, that was right near the temple. But then one devotee got the idea, let's recreate that. So we took a smaller place near the temple and recreated it about 20 years later. Not, not 20 years later, maybe about 15 years later. And again, we had our little cow, cow barn right near the temple. Um, Cow dung is very medicinal. Even today's doctors, many of them will attest to the fact that cow dung has all kinds of nutrients and nutrients within it. And they extract these things to be used for processed medicines. So in that way, the cow is also beneficial. Um, Methane gas, by taking cow dung and drying it out, and then there is a, you'll need a machine for this, which is a, you put the cow dung in this machine, and I don't know exactly how the machine works, but it produces this gas, and then this gas can be used for cooking, and it can be used for heating, so you don't have to worry about, you know, paying for outside you know, amenities to come in and provide you with gas or electricity for cooking. Everything is there, and even for heating your house. Okay. Um, so we have a situation now in the world where the cow has just become uh, something that people get milk from, and they get milk from it and then they put it in the stores and they sell it and they make money out of that. They, they kill the cow and the meat industry, you know, profits like that. They have no understanding of the value of a cow. But not all, just by spending time with the cows, I think we mentioned this in our previous talk. How, um, and I saw this personally. I was with one of my disciples, I won't mention the name, and he was having some, some anxiety. So we were at the Gita Nagari farm at that time, so I told him, all right, if you're feeling depressed, your mind is disturbed, you're in anxiety, spend some time with the cows. And so he did. And after some time, he came back, he said, oh, that was so nice. <laughs> and uh, he had a wonderful experience just being with the cows, playing with the cows, petting the cows like that. And each and every cow, just like each and every one of us is an individual, no two cows are the same. They all have their personalities. They all have their sometimes ways of doing. You'll see some cows are very, very friendly and some they're a little less friendly, but they have their, which would they say they have their cow-like nature. The bull, and that is the, the, the saddest part of today's uh, exploitation. The bull is highly mistreated. They don't see any benefit for the bull except killing it and using its meat. Uh, the bull is actually the modern, the uh, Vedic tractor. The bull 
when trained and tied to a to, uh, to a wagon can pull large amounts of weight like that. Bulls will work hard. They're very strong like that. Especially, especially what is it called when they become, um, what is it? I forgot what it's called. When they're uh, castrated, then they become very strong and then they use them for doing very, very hard work like that. So uh, there is so much. And of course, because we live in this uh, civilization now that uh, is everything is electronic, mechanical, and uh, very, what we say, uh, I don't know, can't really describe it in words. Very, very uninteresting. <laughs> the society today is the most, uh, it's a very bland and uninteresting world that we've created. And the only thing that people get interested in is in shopping when they see all these different signs displaying different items that they can buy and use for their sense gratification. People get excited about these things. But otherwise, the society has nothing to offer. <laughs> so because the bull is so mistreated and exploited and killed at an early age, and they also killed the bull calves too. So. So this is, uh, so we're living in a society that is just wretched and cruel and in a very straightforward way, uh, uh, controlled and organized by a demoniac mentality. And so, so right now we should take some time. Um, one of the things I could suggest when you uh, have your opportunity to move around is go to one of our farms, either Gita Nagri or New Vrindavan, New Rajadam in Hungary, Saranagati also in, um, I think in California. Um, Mother Manasi Ganga just posted uh, about Marari Sevaka farm. They also have cows there. I had the opportunity to visit and stay there for a few days and give some classes many, many years ago, back in the 1980s, I think it was. Uh, it's a very beautiful environment there. And is it as, it's at as remote as you can. If you decide to go to Marari Sevaka, make sure you speak to people who have been there because it's a hard place to find. <laughs> it's very remote, <laughs> like that. So um, we should also mention that um, in order to upgrade our lifestyle and to make a statement that we will not accept milk products from cows that are going to be slaughtered the, the Governing Body Commission, the Managerial Society for ISCA, has come up with a resolution in 2019 that by the, by, the, by the GBC meeting in February of 2022, which is about a year away, all our ISKCON temples should only use Ahimsa milk products for the deities. Cheese, milk, butter, and ghee. These also have, these, they should be all Ahimsa products. That means coming from our own cows like that. So um, we see we also have New Taliban. That's another place where they have cows. And uh, there's a place in, um, in the Ukraine. I think about a, two weeks ago, I, I sent a video of what they're doing there. We have, of course, we have Goshalas in Mayapur and in Vrindavan, many places. So I think it would be nice that the devotees can spend, go out and uh, you'd like to go for vacations or you'd like to go to a different place. Just maybe when the opportunity presents itself, go to one of our Krishna conscious farms and spend some time with the cows there. Yeah. 
And then, and of course, in Mayapur, we have two Goshals, one that is run by a very wonderful devotee named Dayal Mukund, who he set up his own Goshala and takes care of cows and uh, also dogs. He picks up stray cows and stray dogs and gives them a place to live, which is very, very much so in. So when you start to associate with cow, you understand the, the beauty of this particular species and uh, how they provide so much for the human society on the spiritual level, on the material level, on the aesthetic level, on the economic level. Every area of human activity, the cow provides something auspicious for that area's development. The Vedas say that, and this is a statement in the Vedas, that killing a cow is equal to killing two men. And when Maharaj Parikshit saw this uh, low-class man causing harm to a cow, he was ready to kill him immediately. And so, uh, cows, brahmanas, women, children, and elderly people are stated in the scriptures as requiring protection. Anyone who needlessly offends the, any of these five will bring about great amounts of hardship in their own life and suffer greatly. One who exploits cows, Brahmins, women, children, and old people. And it says out of these five, the two most important are the cows and the Brahmanas, because they, they provide the foundation for a God conscious society. And out of the two, and this is interesting, this is in the Bhagavatam, the cow is the most important out of the five. So um, just to give a little understanding of what this beautiful animal, which Krishna has provided for us to live very nicely. So as Prabhupada said, if you have land and you have cows, all of your economic problems are solved. And that's not a euphemism or some kind of hyperbole. It is actually true. You have land, you can grow food, you can get everything you need from the land, you can cut trees and build houses, you can get you can get herbs. Land is also known as mother, she's mother Bhumi, and then you have Gomata, mother earth, mother cow. These two mothers together are everything you need to live happily, healthily, progressively, in and practice, of course, uh, Krishna consciousness like that. So these two things, land and cows, are the backbone of all the economics required. And Prabhupada makes that point in this verse that we are looking at today. What is the use of all these steel mills and tools? And, uh, you go into stores and they're stocked up to the walls with useless stuff that has no value. It's interesting to note that in 19, I'm sorry, in 1850, the year 1850, some survey, uh, no, later on the survey came out. In 1850, it was understood that 95% of the things available for people in general on the common market were considered to be essentials. In other words, required, needed, required things to live. And 5% were considered non-essential. And this is a statistic I heard from one very senior devotee who did the research. And he also showed that now in the present day situation, 
and this was in the year 2004, he made this statement. And now at this time, 95% of the things that we find on the market are considered non-essential and 5% are essential. So everything is uh, switched around. Just like the example is given, right now we are in lockdown and many of the businesses that are not <laughs> considered to be everyday needs are closed. The only stores that are open, at least where I am, are stores that provide medicine or food. Everything else is closed because you can, you can live without those things, but you need medicine and you need food. So they keep these things open like that. So just to, to give a little illustration here about the importance and as it mentions in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto, the three principles of a progressive society are Brahminical culture, cow protection, and God consciousness. Spiritual activity supported by Brahminical culture, which is essential for spiritual activity, and cows which are also essential for spiritual activity. These are the three things that make up a progressive society. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we have some of our devotees, especially His Holiness Bhakti Raghavas Swami. He's made this whole principle of cow protection and uh, farm communities a, uh, his main service. He travels around and gives lectures. He's writing books and he's very much in demand. He goes to different places to speak on these topics like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll conclude there and see if there's any discussion. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for a wonderful session on uh, Gomata. It's always so nice to hear and know the importance of um, uh, Gomata. Uh, uh, your your volume is very, very low. Can you hear me now, Guru Maharaj? No. Now? No. Oops. There must be some internet issues on my side, maybe. Something, if you got earplugs in, you have to take them out. No, I don't have earplugs on, Guru Maharaj, because it's loose. Um, can you hear me now? Let me just... Uh, let me see. Let me see if my volume on my computer is low. Maybe maybe that's it. Can you hear me now, Guru Maharaj? Now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you so much, Jim, for... Uh -huh. Now your voice is not, it's breaking up. Um, okay, so anybody want, would like to ask questions or comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj, um, please accept my little basis. All glory to Shri Prabhupada, all glory to yourself. I have a practical um, question. Uh, in 2019, we went to in, uh, America to see uh, family, and we went almost after 10, 10 12 years. Um, you know, and in those 10, 12 years, we had started practicing Krishna consciousness. So when, uh, in 2019, when we were going, we were also going with kids. And kids are very fond of eating milk and milk products. Now here we order a himsa milk, but cheese and butter we bring it from outside because uh, the ahimsa project here they don't do uh, the cheese that goes on pizza. I mean they don't do cheddar or mozzarella. They do um, a cheese which is not suitable for pizza or um, you know pasta and those kind of Western items. So um, here we eat normal cheese and normal milk, uh, sorry, normal uh, butter from outside. But here, everything, it has the sign of suitable for vegetarians. 
So my great dilemma when we were going to America was that how we will manage over there. So we did a lot of arrangements and, you know, we took a lot of um, hot chocolate sachets and we took a lot of things. So my kids were not drinking outside milk over there. I contacted a few devotees in America and they gave me name of a couple of uh, brands of cheese and milk, which we uh, were buying wherever it was possible and kids were able to drink milk, but not all days were the same. We couldn't go anywhere because of the fact that they can't eat cheese. Onion garlic is another issue. Even at our relative's house, you know, we had to stick to Indian menu because we don't know what they would use um, in cheese. So my dilemma was that how do we manage our practical life? Because say, for example, if we go to America, UK is very safe, but if we go to America, nothing has been mentioned suitable for vegetarians. And even when you go to your to devotee's house or you go to friend's house or family, family also, you don't know what kind of products they are using. So even in Indian cooking, when they use yogurt, you know, you don't have control what yogurt they are bringing. And as far as my knowledge goes, in America, they feed even cows, they feed meat um, uh, granules. So how do we stay clean and safe and how do we stay loyal to cow, mother cow? How do we protect it in, even in these kind of exceptional circumstances? <laughs> I could give you a number of answers. Which answer do you want? Um, I would say, <laughs> obviously, the most clean answer, you know, would be that we just stay away from everything. But looking at the kids, sometimes it was difficult for me to manage. Mm. But, yeah. You, know, in you have to see. You have to explore your conscious and see what you want to do. If you can reframe, it's the best. If you can't, then you have to make some compromise. We don't tell people to stop, but we tell them to try to move forward to those products that are ahimsa. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like where I am here, I'm fortunate. I get a hymn some milk and a hymn some cheese here. And also uh, a hymn some ghee in some sense. But I don't get a hymn some butter. Because nobody's making that. So we are moving, or we should be moving. There are areas that. Hopefully, gradually, the, the society will, you know, come up to the standard where wherever we go, we can get a hymn of milk product. That was the GBC resolution for all temples for the deities. That all this is a resolution that was decided in 2019 for every ISKCON temple by next year, on February next year, all the, all the temples must only provide a hymns of products for the deities. So that means that devotees will also get the benefits too. I won't drink any milk that's not a hymnsa. I'll just, just pass it up. That's my, you know, that's my vow. Yeah. Well, you yeah, have to, I understand. Yeah, you have to examine your consciousness. For the kids, I don't know, you'll have to see what you want to do. You can also educate them, but children generally need milk because it's, helps them to grow nicely. But the store-bought milk is actually not, I, it's not even milk, the stuff you get in the stores. Uh, it's mixed with, if you take a, 
of a, a, a bottle of milk that is a himsa, and you take a bottle of milk that's store-bought and you put it in the refrigerator, the one that is a himsa will not last more than two or three days. But the one in, from the store will last two weeks. Why? Because it's loaded with chemicals. <laughs> What's that? Pasture is a, a homogenation, destroys the good qualities of milk. They homogenize milk. I don't even know what it is, some kind of processing. Pasteurization, all you have to do is take the milk from the cows, heat it up, and let it cool down. And then if you want again, you can reheat it, but that's the only way you need to, to treat milk. You don't need to go through all these processes. They do that in order for, you have to understand our society is all dis, dysfunctional. It's all based on economics. It doesn't care about the individual. It's all how to make money and that's, that's the mood, you know? If somebody gets something good out of that, then, then that's fine. But if they don't, it's the money that's the, that's the aim. <clears throat> so uh, you have to see what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, Mother. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Sorry, my internet got disconnected. I'm back. <laughs> so Shridevi Mataji has posted a message that there are almond milk, soya milk, coconut milk, etc. Uh, are what we have here in the, we take here in USA. Yeah, it's we just, all, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're just words. That's all. Yes. That's, the word milk has been attached to these things. It's not milk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so, all. It looks like milk, but that's why they give it the name. Milk is coming from the cow, not from the coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> you can use the name, but that doesn't 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 come up to the standard of milk. I have a question on this, Guru Maharaj, um, and that uh, uh, we say, and Prabhupada has also said that if you offer milk to Krishna, then that cow is delivered. And uh, I always felt like uh, from last one year, temple programs are closed, but uh, I have noticed that uh, the quantity of uh, milk and paneer um, we used in our temples is very high and it promotes the, you know, uh, the slaughter industry. Uh, whatever is happening in that with the cows, basically. And wait, I minute, wait, 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 you're in the UK. The UK has, is getting a hymn some milk. At least, at least at Bucky Benanta Manor. I don't know what Soho Street, uh, Soho Street might also be getting. Um, so I don't know what Soho Street does, but uh, Bucky Benanta Manor has uh, farms and they have milk there. You can also buy it. But the only problem is if you try to buy it, you're on, you're on a waiting list because there's always a shortage. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the, they just don't have enough production going on. Yeah. So Guru Maharaj, I always struggle with this that like we have Krishna's deities in the house and Krishna likes milk. And uh, milk products, basically, he likes yogurt, milk, paneer, and uh, rasgullas, all these things. And we really want to feed him as well. So I always struggle that there are so much milk product in the house that even if you don't want to, you have to consume it because it's Krishna's maha. You don't have to consume it, you can distribute it. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I try to distribute, but this is always a struggle that I feel like what to do like you definitely yeah. have to offer to krishna yeah distribute it and okay. that's even beneficial for people who get it beneficial for you because you're doing a service too yes that's a good point guru maharaj yes thank you mm -hmm. thank you Hare krishna Hare krishna guru maharaj Okay.
Do we have any more comments or questions? Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada. All glory to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I uh, like, uh, there was a very profound statement that you read from Parashar Muni. It is because of cow there is purification within the planet Earth. That, that, that is a very profound statement that how important the cow is. Mm. Um, but I have two questions, Maharaj. I was reading Krishna book the other day and I always thought that Krishna used to take cows for grazing, no other animal. But in Krishna book, it also mentioned that there were goats and buffaloes. So I was wondering whether, whether, I mean, can you please comment on that? Because I always thought Krishna is with cows, but then there's always mention of buffaloes. <laughs> well, you know, they'd had, they just happened to be there. <laughs> Somebody has to take care of them. I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I, I can't really comment in a, intelligent way on that one uh they're also part of society goats buffaloes even uh what what does it call it the uh, donkeys in our uh, in our farm in govardhan echo village we have um we have sheep we have cows, we have, um, uh, we have donkeys, we have horses. So the cow is important, but it's not the only animal, you know. So we give, um, we give facility and also employment to other animals like that. So I don't know what Krishna used buffaloes and sheep with. For when I was in New Vrindavan, we had one one goat, female goat. Uh, her name was Kubja. <laughs> that was her name. <laughs> and uh, one devotee used to milk her every day. She wouldn't give much milk, but they, goats also have. They give milk. They give a little bit. <laughs> Like that. And then we were making goat milk cheese from the milk. So, so you, I guess, what is your quandary? What is the. No, oh, I, I always thought, Maharaj, that Krishna always took uh, the cows for grazing, but then there was also mention of buffaloes. So, well, I. Well, maybe, yeah, cow, cow, that would be cow, Krishna every day would go out to the fields with his friends. And take care of the cows. That was a regular thing. What what it mentions into the Krishna book is maybe that was just they were just there also. Okay. Yes. You can't really understand. You know, the fact is that that the, within the environment these animals also exist. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you. And uh, just on the buffalo uh, topic, just another question. Buffalo milk, Maharaj. There is mozzarella cheese made out of buffalo milk, always, not cow's milk. Um, and also, uh, so do we, uh, obviously there is, a, there is a different importance between the cow's milk and the buffalo milk. Uh, is that correct, Maharaj, right? Yeah, much, much difference, yeah. Okay. Well, In India, they, they do that, sometimes they, they sell buffalo milk as cow's milk just to make a profit. <laughs> and, and Maharaj, we should always strive for cow's milk rather than buffalo's milk as well. No, I, I wouldn't drink buffalo's milk. You never know. It may not be healthy. Okay. I think it's, I think it's actually a, a risk to drink buffalo milk. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Let's see, here we got from Mahatma and Mahima, what are they saying? Please accept the... Uh, can you read that, uh, Anjali? Yes, Guru Maharaj. So before that, there is a question from Bhakta Robert to Guru Maharaj. I will read that first. Read the one I'm... Yeah, yeah. No, take the one I asked you first. Okay, Guru Maharaj. And um, then we can Har go to Roberto's. Okay. 
Hari Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. Does somebody perhaps have information uh, where can we order ahimsa powder milk? Perhaps this could offer some temporary solution for our private deity worship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, when I was in India, I was also getting a hymn some powdered milk. And just recently, I sent out a little information uh, survey. In other words, I'm looking around to find where we can get a hymn some powdered milk. There was two groups that I know in um, India. One is called Path Meda. And Path Meda is one of the best devotees in India who can't get regular Ahimsa milk also get this Path Meda milk, but Path Meda, we just contacted them and they said they're presently out of stock. So there is Suda Sattva, that's another company, Path Meda, these two. Um, uh, I can answer your question, Mahatma Mahima, by saying if you be a little patient, if as soon as my survey not survey but my searching comes back with some results i'll let you know what we find uh, okay and uh, roberto what do and, we have uh, yes so roberto prabhu is saying i heard from god natraj prabhu from usa that paneer was put in scon prashadam uh, just for the palate of western people it is actually not good for the body. Any insight about this there, Maharaj? Well, Prabhupada said we shouldn't take too much paneer. He said, you, in this one statement, he said, no more than once a week. But paneer, I don't know. It doesn't It's part of the, uh, the food arrangements within India. There's a lot of preparations that use paneer. But if you, use, if you eat paneer regularly, you might have problems. Uh, but I mean, to give you the, the Prabhupada's uh, standard for milk products in a general sense, and this was something he told us personally when he came to New Vrindavan, I was also there. He said, you should not take more than one pound of milk or less than one half pound of milk per day. And then he went on to explain that means all milk products. So milk is great, but in proper quantity. Too much can cause problems. And that's why we got this Ahimsa movement. It's, a, it's just a reaction for the using milk in the wrong way. That's all it is. Uh, and it's also a reaction for killing cows. So, But uh, if you stay within Prabhupada's, uh, you know, per parameters, one pound is 17.2 ounces. A half pound is a half of that. And that includes ghee, milk, you know, milk sweets, these things. Um, Bhakti Roberto was sitting in, you know, m milk product, uh, you know, uh, festival there, sitting in, uh, in uh, Bhakti Vedanta Manor. You have so many accesses to milk products there. You have to be careful. <laughs> it could cause problems. So, um, yeah, for Paneer, Prabhupada said once a week. But Prabhupada gave us, you know, if you read Prabhupada's books, you hear his lectures, you find all these different things that he mentioned. And there's a nice book that was recently published by Prahlad Nanda Maharaj School. I hope you meet, this meets you in good health. It's Prabhupada's state, everything Prabhupada said regarding uh, food and health. So Prabhupada was very concerned that devotees keep good health and they know how to properly eat because eating is a big part, the main part of your health. Okay, anything else? <laughs>
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, does anyone have any another questions, comments, realization? You don't. You don't have to keep thanking me every second. You know. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's, not, it's not necessary. <laughs> I'll just keep quiet, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> just go on with the program. That's all. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Satyanand is last year. Hare Krishna Satyanand Prabhu. Hare Krishna Obensons is to your lotus feet. All goes to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, this is about, uh, we had a discussion earlier on about cows and uh, buffaloes. Um, I've been brought up with uh, uh, buffalo's milk in my childhood. Um, but since I came, um, okay, at that time we, uh, we, a lot of people in our town and villages had buffaloes because buffalo's milk is more richer than, uh, I mean, more creamier than cow's milk. So we used to get more money out of, out of that. Now, since I uh, joined this movement, Prabhupada movement, and practicing Krishna consciousness, and I came to learn, uh, cow is, uh, out of all animals, mother cow is uh, more uh, uh, favorable to Krishna. Now, reason I can see, uh, buffalo gives milk and cow milk gives milk. But cows, cow down, uh, cow down and uh, urine also being used for uh, our health because it's more antiseptic. So that way I put mother cows in a high level out of all animals. So Krishna, uh, mother cow is uh, Krishna's favor more favorable. Krishna likes all animals, but cow is more favorable. It's like a, Krishna likes everyone, but he likes more his devotees because they are favorable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I'm, I'm just doing comparison, and uh, that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. so I, I just, I just, I just shared that. <laughs> okay, good. So yeah, I like yeah. we're, we are focusing on the glories of Mother Cow. Yeah, <laughs> which are unlimited. <laughs> Yeah, but well, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, should we stop here? Do we, or unless we have some more questions. Yes, yeah, so we can take maybe one more last question if there is, otherwise we will can stop it, Guru Maharaj. Maharaj, I had a question which is out of this topic. Um, I was reading, I was hearing one of Prabhupada's lectures on um, Bhagavad Gita chapter 9. And in that purpose, Prabhupada is saying that the material universe keeps expanding. And then he says that even scientists believe that. Um, so I just wanted to double check with you, what did he mean by um, the universe is expanding, the material universe? The universe is expanding? Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. mm, I can't give you a clear answer on that. What is expanding? What 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 element within the universe? The universe itself. Yeah. So, um, if you just give me a few seconds, I was just hearing that lecture this morning. So, that the I can. I know, I've heard yeah. that. I've, I've heard it before, but I. It just so, means the universe is getting bigger. Yeah, so he is saying that uh, Brahman means the biggest, Kim, Brahm, Kim Brahma, Brahman means the biggest, 
and then he's saying brihan uh, brihan nas vat brihavat brihatvat biggest it is already biggest but still increasing that is called brahman so this cosmic manifestation universe it is already the biggest but it is increasing that is also scientific modern science modern mm -hmm. science also says that universe is increasing so brahman <laughs> means the biggest mm -hmm. and that is 8.1 uh, sorry it's not 9.1 it's a lecture on 8.1 he gave in geneva in 1974 8.1 means what? Um Bhagavad Gita shlok of 8th chapter first shloka. Mm -hmm. And okay. um, well, well all, all we can do is agree with what you say that's all we can do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we agree the universes are expanding. Brahman is unlimited, but Brahman is outside of the universes. But Brahman is within the universes as the as the spiritual energy within the material energy brahman pervades everything so if you look at it from that point of view because brahman is spiritual and spiritual is always expanding if it's if it's within the material cosmic manifestation it causes the material energy to also expand yes that makes sense maharaj yes yeah that's the whole thing yeah thank you Okay, thank you very much and we'll continue tomorrow with the same topic. Uh we'll explore at least one more day on uh, simple living farm communities, cow protection and um uh alternate lifestyles as a way to purify the world, purify our existence. Okay. All glories to Shila Bhagavan. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. All glories to Guru Maharaj.